Wonder 3 d is a new app which uses a diffusion model to turn a single image into a 3D object. All the models you can see on screen now were made using Wonder 3 d and each one took less than three minutes to generate. It's just a couple of steps to do, fairly simple. All I did to start with was make a bunch of images using Stable Diffusion and save them with the background removed. Then, using Wonder 3D and waiting that whole two and a half minutes, it generated all the models. Not bad considering my 3D skills are practically non-existent. Now, do bear in mind it's early days yet, hence they have a number of features still under construction, but it does look like they will have a new model available in the future too. Now, while 8 gig of VRAM may be enough for the image generation and Gradio demo, my graphs showed up to 18 gig required for the mesh generation, although there is a Google Colab notebook available, so maybe you can get away with less. There it is, that will take you over to the Google Colab page, and they've got three Colabs there, one for the Wonder 3D and one including the mesh as well. So give those a go, and uh, I imagine they probably do work, although they get updated quite frequently. Also note that this uses CUDA, so you will need an NVIDIA GPU. Also at the top there, they've got the other links. So the Hugging Face demo, which will take you to a little demo now. That doesn't generate the meshes. It just does various views for the image that you provide. It's, it's just a demo, it doesn't really do very much, but we'll have a look at that in a minute as well. Running the commands for this was pretty straightforward forward, though getting the optional Gradio demo working needed a little bit of working around. Much like every other video on my channel, they suggest using a bog standard Anaconda virtual environment, though you can use Miniconda or whatever environment management method you use normally. I've released an Anaconda install guide for Microsoft Windows beginners with the link being in the video description too, should you need that sort of thing. While the install is mostly a copy and paste affair, they do miss out a couple of commands for the really obvious stuff, such as, well, downloading the thing in the first place. That means you'll see a few extra commands here as I go step by step through each one in order. Like they have there, start by creating a new Conda environment. But what they don't mention is the Python version. I used Python 3.10 for my testing, so I know that version works. Of course, when I try to run the command myself, it will say, you've already got one. And no, I won't remove my existing one. But what I will do is go ahead and activate it. Exactly like that second line there says, copy and paste. There we go, got my new Wonder 3D environment. Okay, next you need to download all of their files from the interwebs using Git, which you'll very likely already have installed if you're an AI fan and obviously therefore using Linux for ease, performance and compatibility. However, if for some reason you don't have Git installed, you can just do conda install git like that, and that will install Git for you into that virtual environment. You can then run the Git command to download all of their stuff. And of course, once again, I have already downloaded all of it. So let's CD straight into that directory and we can carry on doing the rest of their command. The next one there being the pip install minus r requirement dot text. Now, having checked those requirements, I found some fairly old software being used by default. This being the case owners of really new cards such as the 4090 may have issues here. But to keep in line with their requirements, I went ahead and installed CUDA Toolkit 11.7.0. There it is, Conda install, I'm using the NVIDIA channel there, CUDA Toolkit. Once that's finished installing, then you can copy and paste the pip install minus r requirements dot text and that will run the rest of those requirements. When that's finished, of course, copy and paste the final command there. If you're using Microsoft Windows, of course, there's a different set of commands to copy and paste just below. 
With the basic install done, downloading the checkpoints is the next step. So there you can click on that checkpoints link, which will take you over to a OneDrive web page. Now, if you go up one directory, click on that pre-trained weights thing at the top with the breadcrumb there, then you can tick that. And when you click download, that'll make a zip file for you, which you can then unzip and you'll get the checkpoints directory exactly as you need it there with the UNET and all those files in it. Of course, in your main Wonder 3D directory. Okay, so that's pretty much everything done. We can move on to inference now. So make sure you have the following models. Yes, we've got that. We've just done that. We unzipped it into checkpoints. We've got UNET and all those other files. We've got our images. They suggest using either ClipDrop or RemBG to remove the background. So we've done that bit. That's fine. Run Wonder 3D to produce multi-view, consistent, normal maps and color images. OK, I'm going to move on to that in just one second. It does exactly the same thing as this Gradio app. Now, while the Gradio app is a demo, it's exactly the same as this one over here. I'm going to cover it quickly just because you may want to run it locally and for completeness. To get this working, you'll need to install some extra packages, download a segment, anything checkpoint and apply PR34. Additionally, Microsoft Windows systems may have issues with Triton, but it should probably work without it. Okay, so there's all the things on the screen. Like I say, I'm just going through this quickly. So that's what you'd need to do before you can run this Python Gradio app.py. One thing to note when running this demo is that it will create a public URL, which you can change if you want to in the Gradio app there on line 347, share equals true, you can change to false. But for now, let's just open up this local one so we can see it running on my machine. There it is. All you have to do is input an image. We'll just pick a random one from here. There we go. Now, do you want to remove the background or not? You can say yes or no. Don't need to. That's already gone. We'll click generate, wait a few seconds and see what happens. Now, by default, it saves all of these files in slash temp slash gradio for me. So no need to download. There you can see exactly what it's done. We've got this sort of angled view of the thing and it's gone and taken lots of other different angles as well. Excellent. Right, time to move on from playing with that demo. Like it says there, you need to do the actual stuff without this Gradio demo in order to get the mesh. So we'll get rid of that and we'll close that one down and we'll start creating an actual mesh. What it does is it creates those six images first, just like in the Gradio demo. So let's do that bit. All right, okay. So we've got this bit, we've done that bit. What we need to do is run this accelerate launch command or run test.shut, which is basically doing that. Okay, let's just have a, a quick look at it. There it is, accelerate launch, and you pass it a config file and another bit of Python, and then another config file, and that's basically what that program does. Okay, so let's give that a run then. There it is, run test.shut. After about 30 seconds or so, that should finish. And then in your outputs directory, you should have one called owl. Obviously, I've done a whole bunch more there. But there we go. There is the owl. And what you get is those exact same pictures like you saw in the Gradio interface. You got the owl from different angles and the normal maps as well. For mesh extraction, they've got a couple of commands there. So let's change directory into that new one. And then they just give an example here. So bash run dot sure, and you need the output folder path and the scene name. And that's basically what we just saw. So that's the output folder path there, the crop size. And then the one we just did, of course, was called owl. So those are the two things we're going to pass to that command. In this example case, however, we do need to throw in one extra command because Anaconda installs CUDA to the lib directory and not lib64, where this will expect to find those NVIDIA files. With that being the case, you can either set the library path first each time you run this command like that. So you're setting your library path to look at that lib without the lib64 on. Or my preferred method is just to create a symbolic link 
from lib to lib64. Then when you go into lib64, it's got all exactly the same stuff in because it's the same directory. Whichever option you went with, you can now run the command like in the example. Let's pop that in. So there's the outputs directory and the owl. Let's run that and wait a couple of minutes. Once again, Microsoft Windows users can just run the program shown in the shell script instead of the script itself. OK, so once that's done, you will have the output here in that NSRPL directory. You'll have two lots of output. You'll have the logs there in the runs directory and in the experiment directory. You'll have a whole subdirectory set of things there. And eventually there down in save you will have the object file. If I just drag that here over into MeshLab, we'll also change the view up here to toggle orthographic camera, make it a little bit bigger. And there we have our 3D owl. Looks rather nice. Look, it's done the back as well. We've got some fairly detailed feathering on there. I think that is quite a nice little 3D model there. Talking of Microsoft Windows, they also provide an alternative, slower, much less accurate version, especially for users of that platform. Once again, Windowsers will likely need to run the contents of the script they give there rather than the actual script itself. So let's pop into that directory and we'll have a quick look at the script. So there it is. That's the actual command that you'll need to run if you're on Microsoft Windows, remembering to replace those with the actual things you want. In this case, there it is, that previous directory with all the images. That's number two there is the owl. Number one there is the directory. So data directories, crop size, case is owl. So backwards to the other command, but never mind. All right, let's run that and see what this version produces. Okay, so now that's finished. It's given me a mesh here. Now this time it's a PLY file rather than an OBJ. Let's just make MeshLab quite big. So there you can see the owl with the, the Neos version instead. If we go back to the NSR one, so that's the NSR one. We just zoom in a bit there. You can see there's obviously a lot more detail than that Microsoft Windows special. Obviously up to you which version you choose to run. Personally, I prefer the NSR one. Okay, now that's all very well and good, but what if you want to use your own images? Well, that's basically all down to the configuration file we used way back at the start, which is of course saved in that configs directory. Now, what I suggest doing is making a copy of that one so that you've always got something you can fall back on. And here is the contents of that text file. Basically, there's two options you could look at changing. You've got the root directory there. As you can see by default, it's example images. And there is the file paths option, which has the owl.png in. So that's why it picked the owl image out of all the different example images they've got. So you can use their other example images just by changing that file path. So instead where it's got owl.png, let's have a look back there, you could put cat or cat head or chili or any of those other file names in there just to run even more tests. As you can see with my example file, I'm now using my example images as the root directory and I've bunged a whole lot of different images in there. Now it does say down here, leave it empty to test all the images in the folder, but that didn't seem to work for me. So I just put them all in there individually. Either way, whatever works. Do remember to save your changes. And then we're going to go back up one directory. So back into the main directory for Wonder 3D. And we're basically going to run that test command again. Let's have a look at that run test. So there you can see it's using that config. And what we're going to do now is run our own config. So it's exactly the same command, accelerate launch, config file, one GPU. But right at the end here, we're using my diffusion config instead. And that will generate the images for everything there. Now, you've already seen these before, but of course, that will go into the outputs directory. And rather than owl, you'll have whatever you called it and all those different images in there, the front, back and sides. There it is. OK, great. So now we've got our images. We have something to turn into a mesh.
meaning all you have to do is go back and pick whichever mesh extraction method you want to use. Once again, I recommend using NSR for the high quality and just change the output folder name and your scene name to generate your new mesh. Now, one bonus note for nerds is that certainly on a number of my runs, I found that cleaning this experiment and runs directory prevented some really weird recursion from going on when I generated more than one mesh at a time. But, you know, that's something that may change in the future. Overall, this seems pretty good to me. As you can see from all their little demo images up there, it provides a very nice output. And with it taking less than three minutes, from just a single image, you can do some fairly reasonable 3D modeling very, very quickly. Looking to create those images using Stable Diffusion in the first place? Well, check this next video out.